If you own a OnePlus 3 or 3T, here are some great tips and tricks to help you truly understand what this flagship is capable of. The model I am using is the OnePlus 3T running the latest Oxygen OS Open Beta 4 with Android 7.1.1. I highly recommend getting the latest open beta version available for your model as it will help you unravel most of the hidden gems discussed in this video and you don't need root to manually update. I'll leave a link down below if you want more information. Also, if you're already familiar with Oxygen OS, then you'll probably already know some of these tips, so don't expect some hidden features that no one's ever seen before because that's not going to happen. This video is mostly for those who haven't had the time to dive deep within the interface, and before you guys ask, the skin I am currently using is from Dbrand. This stone design finish is very appealing as it makes the phone look unique and also provides a bit more grip when handling the device. They also have plenty more skins for plenty more devices. I'll drop a link down below if you want to check them out for yourself. Anyways, let's jump right in with the tips and tricks. Starting it off with the buttons, most of you know that you can switch to an on-screen navigation bar instead of using the capacitive keys, but if you decide to go virtual, you can still enable the fingerprint sensor to also act as the home key or long press to open up Google Assistant. If you're switching from a Samsung, you can also swap the recent and back keys. Double click the power button to open the camera. And if you would like to set different actions when long pressing or double tapping on the capacitive keys, you can have the home button launch the search assistant and the recent key to switch between your last used app. These are just some examples of how I use these shortcuts. You can customize it way more if you want. As for the OnePlus launcher, a really neat trick to add more space to the home screen and app drawer is if you go into the settings, display, display size, and make sure it's set to default or even small to spread everything out even more and when you're navigating through apps, more information is going to be shown on one screen. You can also enable swipe down in the launcher settings to access your notification tray with a swipe down gesture, choose a different icon pack and even rearrange or resize the widgets in the shelf tray by long pressing on a card. A really cool feature though from one of the recent software updates is that you can now automatically set a new wallpaper from pictures taken on a OnePlus device. It's a really nice option to have for diversity, but it would have been nice if they also implemented an option to automatically switch between custom images on a daily basis. If you want to customize the status bar, go to the settings, status bar, and from there you can change the battery icon to a circle, hide it, or even show the percentage right next to it. Plus you can enable or disable icons that would appear on the status bar if it's starting to get a little too crowded. When receiving a notification, maybe you also want to control the importance level. For example, if I want my Gmail notifications to show up at the top of the notification list at all times, always be expanded, and allow it to banner over my home screen when it comes in, then I can set it to a level five. If I want a screenshot notification to appear in my notification tray, but also have no disturbance at all and become hidden from the status bar and lock screen, then I can set it to a level one. To enable this feature, go into the quick settings panel, tap and hold the gear icon for a couple seconds to enable OnePlus Laboratory, which is basically system UI tuner. Go into the settings, OnePlus Laboratory, and enable power notification controls. To actually set the importance level for a notification, slightly drag it to the left or right within the notification tray, tap the gear icon and more settings, tap the A to disable automatic selection, and then choose the level of importance with the slider. Seems like a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it for that full control. These next couple of tricks have to do with controlling the device when it's locked. Gesture controls are a great start. You can double tap to wake, open the camera, toggle the flashlight, and even control your music by drawing certain shapes on the screen. When the phone is locked, you probably also only want necessary apps running in the background to save some battery, and Doze does a great job of hibernating most apps, but if you want to get aggressive, then you can manually select the apps you want to restrict background activity on within the settings. Go to the battery, battery optimization, menu, advanced optimization, enable advanced optimization, go back and select the apps you would like to restrict battery activity on. Now that you're controlling the music and saving some battery, maybe you also want to customize the LED light to know what type of notifications you receive. You can set a custom color for when your battery is full, charging, low, and when you get a notification from an app, such as a text or a tweet. It may not let you change the color on a per app basis, but it's better than nothing. Just go into the settings, display, LED notification, notifications, and there they are. Within display are plenty more awesome features you can mess around with, such as the night mode to reduce strain on your eyes at night, screen calibration to get more accurate colors or manually set the temperature, an option to change the overall UI theme to light, white and light blue accents, or dark black and dark blue accents, and proximity wake to turn on the display by waving your hand over the proximity sensor. Without stopping there, when taking a screenshot, you now have the option of extending it to include an entire page, a conversation, your feeds, and so much more. It's really easy to enable, just take a screenshot by holding down the volume down and power key at the same time or use a three finger swipe 
and tap on the dotted rectangle when the preview pops up. From there, it will automatically start scrolling down the page and once you tap on the screen, that's when it will stitch all the screenshots together to get a giant vertical PNG file. If you love the game, then you should consider turning on gaming mode for your games within the settings, advanced, and gaming mode. This will block any incoming notification and disable the capacitive keys so you are not disturbed while you own all the noobs. For those of you who love photography, you'll be happy to hear that you can shoot raw images on the camera app. This is perfect for those who want to tweak an image that has minimal processing data from the image sensor. To turn this on, you need to tap on the hamburger menu, cog icon, and then save raw image. My last tips and tricks to step up your smartphone game on the OnePlus 3 or 3T are all found within the developer options. To enable this, go to the settings, about phone, tap on the build number seven times, go back, and then you'll find developer options towards the bottom. Here you'll find plenty of advanced features that you should only mess around with if you know what you're doing. I like to enable Advanced Reboot to have the option of rebooting directly into recovery and bootloader mode, USB debugging to have the device communicate with the Android SDK found on my desktop for ADB, and demo mode to make the status bar look nice when recording videos. Here you can also change the animation speed to make the phone seem faster as well. Well, those are some of the best tips and tricks I found to be useful on the OnePlus 3 and 3T, let me know in the comments if I missed any hidden trick that's not very well known. Drop a like if you enjoyed and make sure to check out andropolice.com for your latest and greatest news on Android. I'll catch you guys in the next one.